What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Breaking the Clutch. My name is Slick. Today, we've got a build order guide for Vortis. Season 11 is here. Let's send this one off with a bang. Starting off with a harvester, starting with a chopper. Send your units. You want to make sure that you send one of the grunts to grab some of those power crates. Very, very crucial. Your first leader power is going to be combat spoils. It's probably the most important feature of this build. Uh, as soon as your harvester comes up, you're going to upgrade it, and you want to go generator second. Uh, if you look down in the comment section below, I'm going to make one of the BTC mods uh, actually set up an entire build order guide. So we'll see if they're willing to do that. So just look down in the comments. If not, I'll have to do it now. <laughs> so anyway, send the chopper immediately. Now, this next order of events is really important. Uh, you build a harvester third. You grab supply crates here off the bat as well. It's really important that you buy this mini base or a mini base, doesn't matter what map it is. As soon as you hit 200 supply right here, you want this speed to be as quickly as possible. 200 supply, I buy the thing. As soon as you have enough power to upgrade your extractor, you're gonna do it. And then you're gonna send your chopper off of the supply crates he's on and go grab power crates. So watch this, I'm gonna go immediately to power crates. Then you're going another harvester. All right, you're grabbing supplies with all of your grunts now that they're done collecting their first round of crates and whatnot. And then you're also going to want to get your units um, near your second mini base before the 1 minute 30 mark. It's really crucial. As soon as this mini base comes up, we're going Harvester. And then on our main base, we're going to go for a War Council. So you're going to notice that this build is super tight knit. And I've been spending a lot of time in custom just trying to figure out a good system here. And uh, this is just where I'm at. So right here at around 1.30, I'm sitting at the thing, build the mini base the second that I can, once again. And then the second that second mini base goes up, you want to send your chopper off of the crates he's on immediately to the nearest mini base. The reason you're doing this is because Combat Spoils is going to feed you money so notice that the second that i have enough money for vortis i'm going to build him and you're going to notice that the build order is still very seamless at this point after you get your vortis started you're going to want to make two grunts exactly two grunts you're going to notice that i get here i'm going to make a second grunt squad i'm still grabbing crates and the second i show up now my leader point is going to be available so now is when you want to drop in a grenadier. You want to drop in your grenadier ASAP because you want the cooldown to reset as quickly as possible. If you go to your enemy's mini base and they don't have it yet, you're going to want to steal that and then get grenadier drop and drop it in. But in this situation, they didn't have a mini base, so I'm just going to immediately rush the back end of this guy's base. I say this guy, but it's actually a legendary AI. Uh, didn't have anybody nearby me when I was actually getting ready to record this. So, of course, we're playing against computers. So it's legendary, so, I mean, you know, slight... Slight excitement. If you've watched this far, guys, I will say the ending is one of the coolest build order guide endings I've ever produced. So just keep your eyes out to the end if you want. It's uh, really exciting. Okay, so as soon as you have enough money for infused hammer, you're going to buy that. Of course, you also notice that the second my war council came up, I also built my Vortis himself. Now I'm also going to split my units and go to each mini base slot. In that situation, I did make a lot of income off of just attacking his base with those two units. So we're looking good. On my second mini base, I also threw, I also threw down a raid camp. Uh, the reason why I have the raid camp is for hammer brutes as well, so jump pack brutes as well as the grenadiers. As soon as your infused hammer is done, what you want to do is actually sack your war council and throw down another harvester. The reason you don't wait for another generator is because you're just trying to produce units like hell. You're just kind of going all out here for infantry. Um, this build is really, really exciting. It's pretty significant, especially since grenadiers are really good now. The second you have 300 power again, you're going to want to upgrade to grunt mines. And the perfect number of Grenadiers is 2 to 3, um, in my opinion, simply because they're 250 supply apiece, which is way too much. As soon as you have the infused hammer from Vortis, you just want to kind of use it ASAP again, um, just because you want to have the cooldown reset before you actually get the, uh, the next leader power, which you're going to see here shortly. You're going to notice also that I'm just grabbing minis, I, uh, minis as well as nodes at the same time, just constantly producing grunts. Um, and we're getting very, very close to, say, pushing the front door and seeing what's going on. Of course, you're going to notice, like, the second I have the Grenadier drop again, I use it. So I'm always kind of waiting to have 250 supply just to continuously keep dropping in Grenadiers. That's why I only produce, say, a couple off the mini. I'm sorry, yeah, off of my raid camp is simply just to keep those numbers um, on a low end. See, because they're so damn expensive. You see, I'm going to throw down another raid camp there in an aggressive stance. That's what you normally do. In most games, what you do in the situation in the first place is you'd show up and your opponent would actually be sitting there with a mini base and you'd just attack the mini base. You wouldn't have to back off and you would do a lot of damage. But in this legendary AI situation, he opts for rabbits as his bell. So, you know, <laughs> whatever, dude. Good for you. Of course, you're actually going to want to get the 6 o'clock power there. 
Um, and what that will do is actually allow you to uh, get your health back for all units inside of infusion, pool, infusion pools. Now you notice that my cooldown still isn't back from my Vortis, but that's okay because the blue guy is so screwed right now in this situation, he's just not going to be able to pull off anything. Of course, I did buy a second base here knowing my position. Of course, you're going to notice something very fascinating. I don't know if you guys are experienced against playing as legendary AIs, but I will say that sometimes they pull these wild cards, and you're going to notice I see a Warthog. I'm like, huh, that's pretty damn early. And then you're going to notice I see a bunch of Warthogs here, and I'm like, wait a second, who is this person? I see that it's Isabel. And I'm like, okay, so a lot of these guys are probably just uh, AIs. Uh, so I'm going to keep making a couple more Grenadiers, just constant grunt pump, not making them off of those. Um, my number one goal here is just to get an attack too, so that's why I'm going for all the nodes at once, and you know, I'm just making sure that my Vortis stays alive, yada yada. So I'm just going to pull back my little army here, I don't really care about the Warthog aggression. Um, you're going to notice once I have control over the nodes, I'm just going to all units back to my base and try to just play defensively here. Um, the next big thing that you're trying to hope on doing is, like I said, just upgrade attack tech 2, get your base defended. Normally, playing in any situation, if somebody actually does this, and like this does happen on ladder often, and this, of course, this build does work for 1s, 2s, and 3s, 100%. Um, you'll notice that players will opt for a very defensive style where they just throw up a couple turrets. And honestly, the couple turrets will completely thwart Vortis's rush in a lot of ways. If you don't, say, see it coming and then just make a couple jump pack brutes and actually try to combat those. But if the opponent just opts for anti-infantry turrets, you're kind of screwed, to be honest. Um, so if that does happen, you just kind of keep map control. Your army is definitely going to win off their front door if that's the case. Uh, yep, thank you for tweeting us, guys. Uh, tweet us at Clutch Breaking for more notifications like that on my phone. Uh, but also, in that situation, you just kind of leave and uh, stay on your side of the map. Make sure you get the better situation overall for yourself. Uh, you're going to notice that even though he has all these Warthogs, I really don't care. Warthogs do terrible DPS. Even... I shouldn't say terrible DPS, uh, in good numbers they really are effective, but all I'm going to do is make a couple of hunters and then I'm going to be fine. Next thing I'm going to do is go for infusion tech. Infusion tech in my opinion is the best uh, fourth leader point uh, in an aggressive situation, simply because the infusion pools, which is exactly what I'm building up my army to do, is just be very aggressive with infusion. Um, you know, it's just going to make me better off overall. So I'm going to start making a couple Marauders in the mix. Um, I found after doing this build order video that I like to go for Apex first, just to get Engineers in the mix quickly. Um, of course, using their Y ability is great. Going to get the upgrade for Tier 2 Grenadiers as well, get some more Hunters rolling out, and then just kind of get myself situated on my second base. Um, and like I said, even though this guy is a, or this opponent, <laughs> I keep saying this guy, like... In 2052, these AIs will have personalities, but not yet, Slick, okay? So as of right now, this guy <laughs> did it again. This AI is actually a very decent style Tech 2 Isabel play. This is pretty much all you can do with Isabel, and the AI knows exactly what to do in this situation. Um, just massing hogs, really. Uh, but I will say that uh, it's just kind of putting me in a better position with each hog that this person produces. This, oh, listen to me, guys. What is wrong with me? Uh, with every single thing that this AI produces. So, War Council's up. Next thing I want to do is get uh, Vortis's upgrade and actually chase into Tech 3. Um, essentially, in this situation, is Vortis, if you're sitting with map control, you just kind of rush the Tech 3 and get your Grenadiers upgraded. You see there, I got a really good slam with those uh, Brutes there. So I'm just going to kind of activate the Y button there. I actually kind of glitched out from Vortis, and I didn't realize it. But of course, I'm going to get the Infusion Pools running around, so all of a sudden I activate my Leader Power, and I'm going to start swimming in uh, swimming in health after I realize <laughs> it takes me a second. I'm like, wait, I, you guys heard the crack too. I know you did from the hammer. It's just something's not right. So anyway, here we go. All of my units are getting their health back. Uh, any situation against any leader in any army, Oftentimes, Vortis's heal here from the leader power is so good. I'd say it's one of the strongest in the games, er, in the game. And just having this massive heal in your back pocket, as long as you know how to, if you play a lot of Vortis, you get used to using that leader power and cracking the hammer and just getting your entire army sitting in a pool of happy, healthy green goo. Um, and you know you don't even have to go for goo tax, which is you know the vortex with the goo. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Just kind of opt in for this kind of awesome army ball where you have engineers, mostly grenadiers, then you have some counter units mixed in with a grunty backbone. Uh, I threw in marauders as well because in my opinion marauders are really good against warthogs because they slow them down. You start picking units one at a time. 
This situation, you know, I, I scouted multiple times throughout the game, and I knew that he, this AI was going for anti-infantry turrets, so I legitimately cannot push this front door at this point in the game. Here I am opting in for another extractor, just trying to spend all of my eco. Gren drop is back, but I'm already maxed out pop-wise. I picked up a third base on his side of the map, uh, so I'm just, you know, I'm looking great. I'm looking great. Um, at this point of the game, which is really easy to get to if someone goes for a quick tech on you, uh, like I said, you see this a lot in twos and threes and teams, not really in ones, but in ones that's a pre preferred scenario is if you just get to fight an army right away in the first five minutes as Vortis, because usually you'll win um, if you just have good control and keep your Vortis alive, it's the most important thing. Uh, if someone does end up doing the quick tech methodology on you like you're seeing here, then you just kind of have the better army, situate yourself to defend properly, and then make some marauders and you're set. Except if you know if, if an enemy's going for all hornets, then the grenadier concept still is pretty good because infantry versus air in general. Of course, infantry on paper wins, um, but just keep in mind that you're going to want to have uh, different styles um, of counter units for depending on whatever the enemy is doing. So here we have Vortis with a massive health bar, cataclysms on the way, and we're just you know sitting our way into tech three. This is what I'm doing here, is I'm just using Vortis's Y button just so I can get some health back on my army. This is kind of what you do. Um, recommend using it in combat, of course, especially because the splash from the hammer is great. And of course, Vortis on Tech 3, when he's sitting inside the Gooey Goo, he will be cloaked, which is really fantastic in a lot of ways. Um, and of course, uh, it's just it's just fantastic to see. In my opinion, Vortis is one of the most underrated heroes, and he is just an absolute goat. Um, here I am now getting ready to upgrade into tier 3 Grens, uh, throwing down another extractor just to keep up my power eco. Um, and of course my supply is just sitting there floating on a very happy, happy 15, 1600. <laughs> now upgrading reinforcements as well and uh, getting everything else. But you know, I'm just going to buy a couple of cloak gens, I'll buy a shield gen, blah, blah, blah. You know, at this point in the game, you just got them completely locked down. There's nothing they can do. Of course, just getting desperate to buy a base. But like I said, if you're hanging around, this is what you're here for is this ending. Uh, of course, what I'm building up for, if you haven't figured it out right now, guys, is I'm building up for a very hefty cat army. And cat, of course, means cataclysm. In this situation, I'm just going to make myself the most attractive, gooey, slimy army ball that you can possibly make. Um, and you'll see exactly why. <laughs> uh, extractor's coming up now as well. Uh, I can just send my chopper to get a little bit better vision in a different position at this point. Now sitting at 1,000 power. Just constantly trying to keep up. Getting a couple more engineers in the mix. More engineers are great because you can just spam that Y button. Of course, I have another Gren drop on the way. So I don't buy this base. Yada yada, another Grenadier on the way. Just keep producing them. Let's get infused stealth now. That'll get my Vori cloaked. Um, of course, Vortis is a very crucial part of this endgame attack philosophy. Um, at this point in the game as Vortis, if you actually do get here, like I said, he's such a strong early game leader, you don't always get here. But if you do get into the Tech 3 position, what you want to do is just upgrade your Vortis all the way, save the infused hammer Y button ability, and what you're going to do is just upgrade your Grenadiers, smash the, the Y button ability with Vortis, and just surround a base with all kinds of infusion craziness. And then you hit the nuke button, and then the chaos ensues. And that's happening in about three minutes. So just fast forward to that now if you just want to skip to that. If you want to see what I do here in the late game kind of build situation. I you notice I do end up going for Infusion Tech 2. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was called Infusion Wake this whole, or Invigorating Frenzy this whole time. I apologize, I would have said that earlier. Um, also, Combat Spoils 2 is, uh, is pretty decent. Um, but, you know, we're doing it for the boys here uh, in terms of the videos. Just trying to make something really exciting at the end. Of course, a lot of Marines now. Uh, AI decided to tech swap into infantry, seeing that all I was doing was infantry. Of course, the Hunters don't do much against them, but Grenadiers now are actually really good anti-infantry. And what do you know, most of this guy's army is hologram. So we're going to push up here finally to the base, even with all the anti-infantry turrets here. And thus, Vordis pulls out his violin and begins playing the strings of the Gooey Gutex making a wonderful serenade of 60 FPS cataclysm glory. Look at this. It's romantic. Look at how the base is just dropping. All these health bars went from full to zero, and I'm pretty sure that Isabel is sitting in a glorious Fort 2. <laughs> And there you have it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this Florida's build order. 
I'm very excited that Vortis is actually decent right now. Uh, he definitely has been struggling in the last couple seasons. Um, of course, shout out to the few guys who are on ladder actually using him. And of course, in teams now, especially, he has a very good advantage on a couple different leaders. And he's also really exciting to use in the hands of the people who know how to use him. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this gives you some insight on how to use Daddy Vortis. I hope you enjoy using him in pubs now as well. And you guys have a fantastic day. I think we're doing another build order tomorrow for another leader that is definitely underused. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, we also did a poll recently on the channel asking what videos you want to see, ones, twos, or threes, and it was overwhelmingly teams play. So expect some videos of that to come out as well as some live streams. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Slick from Breaking the Clutch, and we'll see you guys next time. If you enjoy Breaking the Clutch content and want to get more involved, join our Discord server to find teammates, community, and the ability to chat with us directly. Furthermore, follow us on Twitch to join the experience live, where we play our favorite Halo games and hang out with our audience multiple times a week. You'll find the links to both of these in the description of the video down below. Thank you for participating in our community and enjoy the video.